Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're doing a painting based on Earthbound. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. I've really loved the sanctuary locations in Earthbound. I think they're really unique um, and they're all super different from each other. But I think Pink Cloud might be one of my favorites just because of how different it is. The sky is a different color, um, the rocks are purple here. And even though I did sketch this with all of the clouds pink because I was trying to make it a bit more cohesive, after I did it, I thought it took away the specialness of the single pink cloud, so the other ones will be white in the final painting. Just know that even though they're pink here, they're going to be white on the canvas. And the first thing I want to do is do the sky background. It's kind of a teal, blue, green, light color, but I thought it would be too flat if I do it the same exact color as the game. So I'm going to do a transition from that color into a slightly bluer version of it. I've mixed up two colors for the sky gradient. I have this one here, which is more like the game, and it's kind of a bluish green color with just a little bit of blue in it and a ton of white. And then this one up here is similar, it just has a lot of blue compared to this one. So I'm gonna start with this green one and start from the bottom and bring it all the way across the canvas to probably about halfway up, and then I'll switch to the blue and do the blue from the top down. The next thing to paint is all of the background clouds, which are going to be white. And I can't just put them on the canvas because I'm not sure where they're going in relationship to the cliff or the pink cloud. I don't want them to end up in an awkward space where they look weird next to each other. So I'm going to sketch in roughly where the cliff is going and where the pink cloud is going. And then I can roughly sketch in spaces for the rest of the clouds. I wanted to test that my cloud color would look good with this background. And I know I had said that it would be white against the background color, unlike the pink of my sketchbook, but I wanted to make sure that whatever color I chose would look good with this background color. So in my sketchbook, I did a little gradient with the background color. And then the first cloud I did here is neutral gray with white. And then my next color is Payne's gray with white, just to see how this looks. And this color is actually ultramarine blue and carbon black together. And with white, it kind of makes it a little bit of a violet color, which I thought might look nice with the cliff face, which is kind of violet already. And then I tried to do the same thing, but having both together into one cloud. And I like the look of it on the teal and the green background, but I think that it would look best if I just did a neutral cloud color. So I'm going to mix up a neutral gray and then have some white and I'll start tapping in these clouds. To tap these in, I'm just using a bristle brush and just a little bit of paint on the bristles. And then over on my canvas, I'm just tapping on the right sides of all of the clouds and then trying to kind of fill in the center pieces. Just because all of the center pieces will get filled up by lighter colors later, I'm just trying to create a base to put the lighter colors on. Once I finish the darkest color, I'm just gonna use the same tapping motion and bring in lighter and lighter grays on the left side of each of these clouds.
Really, the only detail for this cliff face is the hairline cracks that sit across the face of it. These aren't rocks where you would have different like facets of them. It's a very, very smooth cliff face with just these little cracks through it. So I've drawn them in with chalk, kind of basing them on the different patterns in the game. And I'm just going to take the darkest purple I have, which is even darker than my shadow color, and go over all of these chalk lines. The great thing about this cliff face is I didn't have to sit there and use painter's tape to keep these lines straight. Because it is nature, it's going to have a little bit of curve or jagged edges in it on purpose. So I tried to let that be there and kind of function as that line. Then I took my chalk and drew in the pink cloud. And I'm starting to fill it in with a base color and I've kind of picked a um, darker purple pink color and I'm going to fill in the entire thing with this first. I'm going to keep building layers of lighter and lighter pinks just to kind of bring some of that highlight so it still gets kind of the same texture as these clouds but has kind of this swirliness to it. So I'm starting with my darkest color and just doing in a base layer. Now this cloud is obviously too dark and I need to start bringing in the highlights for it. So on my palette I have that color for the shadow here and I've mixed up another shadow color if I need it just to make it a little bit darker in areas. And then I have a new color that's going to be the main body of the cloud and then I have a highlight for it which is the same color with a little bit more white and a little bit more red just to make it a little more pink instead of so violet. And if I need to I can take some more white and add that into my colors to make them even brighter. As I've been working on adding the highlights to the cloud, I realized I didn't really like it as, you know, smooth and sharp of a line as it is. Everything else is really fluffy for the clouds, and I think this one should be that way too. So I'm just going to take some smaller brushes and start to tap in the line over here um, just to make it a softer edge. And then towards the left, I'm going to do the same thing but with my highlight colors. Just like these clouds here, I'm going to work on tapping that in to soften up some of these lines. Now with the swirls and everything that kind of flows with this cloud, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to kind of just tap in the shadow along the outside of each of these rings and then the highlight on the left, just so they kind of stand out like they are kind of swirled in there with the puffiness. Every time I put a new layer of light pink on top of this cloud, I think this is going to be the last light pink layer. And then I put it on all the way and it's not bright enough yet. So I think I'm gonna try for one more layer and then after I finish that one, I wanna do one more that's a little bit lighter, but it's only gonna just be on some of the highlights just to give it its final shape. Besides the swirl in the middle, the cloud is done. 
and I'll work on that when I start to work on the clouds that sit here in the entryway of the gate, but I've worked on drawing this in chalk first, and I wanted to make sure it was balanced and mirrored on both sides. That's the hardest part. You're going back and forth and back and forth until you're happy with it and it's perfect on both sides. But now that it's blocked in with chalk, I'm going to start to paint it. The inside is going to be solid black just because it is kind of like an entryway into a cave. And everything else is also pink. But I wanna make sure it's not the same pink as the cloud because then it's just going to blend in. So it has some of these like yellow gold tones on the edges. So I'm going to kind of take this pink and take some gold and mix them together and use that for the entryway. The gate is made up of three different colors. The main color is kind of a bubblegum pink and I wanted it to be different than the cloud so it wouldn't blend in. So I made it a lot more red instead of kind of a little bit more of a cooler pink. Um, and then I made a dusty version by adding the complement to it just to kind of tone it down and make it the shadow color. And then the highlight is going to be this peach color. And I'm going to put the highlights on the top left of everything. That's where the highlights are for these clouds and that's where they're going to be on the gate too. We have to keep it consistent, otherwise it's going to look very strange. The gate is done, but I need to bring a little bit of the pink cloud into the gate so it looks like it's disappearing back into that cave. I drew in the spiral for pink cloud, trying to keep it elliptical so it kind of goes back in space a little bit. And as I work on the different pinks for that, I'm gonna kind of bounce back and forth on each of these two things, the swirl and the doorstep. It took a little bit to get the swirl right. I wanted to make sure it looked like it was part of the cloud, otherwise it would look like it was just something sitting there on top of it. So I made sure that I was using the same tapping motion that I did with the rest of the cloud, and that I continued to use the same colors that made up the rest of the pink cloud. So going back and forth between all my pinks for a little bit, just making sure I kept tapping all of the colors in. And then once I was happy with it, I just took some white and kind of brushed it on the very tops just to make it stand out from the rest of the pink cloud. And the only thing left to do is sign my name in the corner. And we're done. We have Pink Cloud from Earthbound. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes. And I'll see you again here for another video game painting.